Hey guys, it's Rodimus Primal, I'm back with another video, and today I'm going to be giving you guys my review for the Transformers Studio Series 86 Hot Rod. And obviously this is based upon his appearance in Transformers the movie, and it comes with a whole bunch of accessories, and when my wife told me that this was on the shelf, I had to run to the store and go buy it, and I have been waiting for a good looking Hot Rod figure for a long time, so uh, now taking a look at the back of the packaging, you can see the backdrop itself is based upon his appearance in the movie when he faces off against Galvatron. And it says also, the hot rod lights our darkest hour. And I am very, very excited to open him up, and I can't wait. So without further ado, let's sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let's transform and roll out. Consider supporting the channel on Patreon, becoming a channel member, or purchasing some merch on my Teespring store today. Come out, Autobot. We all must die sometime. Not today, Galvatron. Okay, so here is Hot Rod out of the package, and he kind of looks like he just stepped out of the screen for the most part. It's a really good looking mold overall and i am very very pleased to almost kind of say this is like a mini masterpiece in a lot of ways but there are some things that as i've been messing around with it that i feel that he could have been a little bit better of a toy but he does overall look really good getting a closer look at the toy you can see how posable he is you can open up his hands uh, and how he moves his shoulders and his legs uh, but the one problem that i have and you can kind of see it is the yellow all over the joints and the insides and it was probably had to do with the fact that it was gang molded you know along with the spoiler but I mean you can kind of see like all the yellow all over the place and the gray on the back there and they could have gone for a you know a unified look for each of the colors of the joints but you know other than that he does look really good he's very poseable you can see he moves his waist around and you know you can get him into very uh, similar positions and, and you know running poses as you saw in the in the movie and you can get his arms uh, Tilted so that he can uh, blast his um, arm mounted cannons uh, But the problem I have is with his shoulder and you kind of see the way the shoulder joint like tilts up and how it like rotates there uh, It's kind of makes it difficult to get him into good positions to be able to blast his his cannons and uh, it, it it's something that like I, I wish that his that they used a ball joint for that particular section. And getting a closer look, you can kind of see like how like you have to tilt the whole entire shoulder just to get it down like how you need it. And uh, other than that, you can get him kind of in these these really cool positions otherwise. Uh, but because of the tightness of the joints, you can see the way that it's separated there, and uh, it's 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 a it's a pain. Um, other than that, like he's is he's very poseable otherwise. Getting a closer look at his face, you can see that youthful hot rod look to his face instead of the older and wiser Rodimus Prime. And uh, he's also, it says on a ball joint there, but also he can wear his sunglasses at night by flipping up the head like you can see here and flipping the sunglasses down. And that kind of gives you that same thing where, you know, he had tilted his arms up uh, in order to do the scene in the movie where, uh, you know, looks at, sees the Decepticons and starts opening fire on the shuttle from a distance on top of Lookout Mountain. And uh, he also comes with these two uh, blast effects. And these are really cool looking. Uh, they kind of give off like uh, they're almost like flames kind of coming out. So it does look like, you know, blue hot flame. And you can put them on the uh, on the uh, you can put them on the arm cannons here like so. And it does look really, really cool when all said together. So, you know, he's wearing his sunglasses at night while firing on Lookout Mountain at the Decepticon shuttle. And he just looks really, really cool otherwise. And if we flip up the glasses back up like so, you can make that famous scene uh, later on in the movie when he's firing on the Sharktacons. When he says, uh, you know, we can't hold out forever, Cup, but we can give them one ginormous repair bill. And uh, we'll take off these uh, blast effect cannons, but uh, like, man, just like the shoulder joint there just makes it really difficult. And with the yellow, it just, 
it's it's kind of a pain but also take a look at this thing here um it's really cool that they added this as an extra effect it's not it doesn't affect the transformation but you can tilt out the arm and it kind of gives that welding torch like he had when he repaired cup uh in the movie as well and on top of that the other the other fist can also tilt over as well again not part of the transformation but it comes with another accessory which is this buzz saw and the buzz saw can plug into the peg like you can see and this way he can uh chop on a robot squid's arm to free cup uh, which is why he was he had to use the welding torch in order to repair him so it's kind of like this is where they drew the inspiration from the movie and it is a cool added extra effect to him that uh, really gives him a lot of extra flair and makes this toy worth the the price point but with the open hands he also comes with two blasters here, uh, which is very reminiscent of his G1 blasters. Um, if you're very familiar with his G1 blasters, they look similar to his um, Gerodimus Prime's single rifle, but the original Hot Rod toy came with two blasters here. I'm gonna put them in the arms here. Now, I think we're gonna do something better. We're gonna get these this blast effect instead, and that's gonna make it look that much more awesome take off these arm blasters here and just taking a look at his back here um he also has weapon storage which actually is really really cool as you can peg it onto the back uh just by the way that they were molded well uh, with the two holes there it allows him to be able to hold other items while holding his blasters back which is kind of neat and you can also take the buzzsaw as well and that is an added extra weapon storage so he can carry it basically all on his back like so and then you can just pose him and have him stand uh tall well as tall as he is which is he's not really the biggest figure um in the entire set but comparing him next to his g1 counterpart there is g1 hot rod and then again here is his original blasters that uh, he carried which of course you can't store on his back but uh, you can see that that's how the original Hot Rod toy came, so it's very reminiscent of that in particular. And I'm going to take these blasters here, give them to him like so. For those of you unaware, in 1987, they re-released Hot Rod as a Target Master, and he came with uh, a different weapon. And which is Firebolt here. So if you did get the Siege, um, you know, Target Master or actually Battle Master Fire Drive, this is actually Firebolt was the original name. And they also changed the fists so that they could hold, he could hold a different weapon uh, because his original, you know, blasters were a little bit different. I want to have Windblade come in here with that very same Fire Drive toy so you can see the differences between them. And I am going to give Fire Drive or Fire Bolt to Hot Rod, which I think probably deserves a paint job in order to reach, reach that G1 aesthetic from the original toy. And for another quick comparison, here is Classics Rodimus, or actually it's Hot Rod, but uh, they didn't have the name trademark at the time. So you can kind of see the differences between them. And that was the first new version of the G1 character. And making another comparison is here is Titan's Return Hot Rod. And I'll be quite honest with you, I much prefer this new one compared to the Titan's Return one. The spoiler is bigger. And the other thing is, is that the uh, Titan's Return toy does reference the original toy with that motor on the back of his head. But I definitely like the Studio Series one more. And bringing in a... Another comparison here is the Hot Rod portion of the Power of the Primes toy, although I like to use that one as Rodimus because that this one, this new one is taller and I much like the smaller one to be Hot Rod. And this one at least has the spoiler, but a lot of people had made mention of the fact that you can do this, you can fold the spoiler up to give a better back profile by comparison, but posability wise you can see how much stability issue there is with that uh, power of the primes toy and i much prefer the 
uh, Studio Series 1 particular. And bring some more comparisons in, here is my customized Earthrise RC, Takara Legends Blur, Target Master Takara Legends Cup, Netflix Bumblebee with an Autobot symbol, Takara Legends Wheelie, Siege Springer, customized with some paint, my customized Siege Ultra Magnus, and that kind of gives you a pretty good impression of the 1986 cast all together with Hot Rod and the whole bunch. And they all look pretty good all together, I gotta say. And here is my customized Earthrise Optimus Prime to compare him with. Now, one of the features of Earthrise Optimus Prime is the Matrix, and that very same Matrix comes with Studio Series 86 Hot Rod. Uh, the thing is, of course, is the blue is a little bit different, so you uh, get a kind of a nice, shinier uh, crystal out of it. But you can, of course, put the blast effect into the Matrix uh, so that Hot Rod can hold it in his hands and then, of course, have uh, Power of the Primes, Rodimus Prime, be his transformation with the backdrop that I have here. Unfortunately, uh, when I went to record this portion, for some reason, my camera stopped recording here. So at least I have a still image of this uh, particular scene here so you can see uh, the comparison of... Uh, Studio Series Hot Rod with Power of the Primes, Rodimus Prime. And for comparison, you can see Optimus Prime holding his Matrix above uh, with a Studio Series Hot Rod, kind of giving that passing of the torch to the new leader since it was Optimus Prime himself who said, Arise, Rodimus Prime. And bringing him in for transformation, we are going to untab these uh, sections here with the wrist mounted cannons and flip them over and the fists themselves just get covered by uh, the one plastic piece there because you don't have to worry about like covering the fists a certain way so we're just going to move them in here like so and then we're going to rotate the back and open up the head portion and you'll notice here this is the act this transformation is very inspired by the transformation when they were on quintessa and uh, you know you tilt the head in like so transforming him was getting this like rotation here uh like i said it's kind of like very similar to the transformation on quintessa you're going to tilt out the arms like so hold out the chest hold out the hood we're going to open up these legs like so and just so you can kind of notice that the Tires themselves kind of give you that same vibe of the original G1 toy where the tires were kind of like there because they didn't fold in. So it was kind of a cool, neat uh, feature in the way that they, this whole thing transforms. And I think that's kind of similar to the way that the Masterpiece does as well. And they're going to tilt the feet in before you close everything up. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So... Of these tabs because this part here is very very tight and we have to rotate the, the waist we're going to close off the legs like so this is very reminiscent of um power of the primes jazz and the way the legs kind of tilt in with the transformation it kind of reminds me of that in its in, in its entirety and i've transformed him a couple of times but it's still kind of like confusing with the way that the legs are because of how everything folds over. And I really, really don't like the idea behind a fake chest uh, with the hood. I wish that it was like all one piece. And then these tabs fold out like so. That actually gives us the headlights. And we kind of kind of close everything together to make the car. Tab in the back section. One of the things you'll start to notice is as I'm clipping everything together, it's like, you know, everything snaps in, but then you have to like 
you put one piece in and another piece like disconnects. So you have to like reconnect it and then like you, you slide another piece in and it like disconnects. So it's kind of like really like clamming it all together just to get that car mode just right. And, like some of the parts like seem to like disconnect there underneath and uh, it, it's it, it becomes a challenge in trying to get it as flush as possible is uh, it's kind of a pain in the butt. But once you're able to finally get it all together, so you get yourself an awesome looking hot rod car. And one thing I do want to take note of is look at how there is like a gap there underneath like the, the top part of the car there. And it doesn't sit as flush um, no matter what you try and do. And I've heard that there are some fixes out there, but no matter what, like out of the box, the problem is, is that the car mode just is not as flush as it needs to be. But looking at it from this angle, you get that awesome Knight Rider look and feel to it. It rolls really well. Um, but again, just trying to get it to like be as flat as you need to be um, is okay. It doesn't seem to roll <laughs> as smoothly as I want to either. And maybe it just might be like a slight adjustment. And also, I don't like the fact the yellow joints are sticking out. And it's unpainted in the back for being such an awesome looking car. And uh, like all these yellow bits just don't look right on the car. And I wish that they were painted. And I may actually take some magenta and red paint and try to mix that and trying to like make like a good uh, hot rod paint to, to cover up all those details. And again, like I had said before, you can also store the guns um, very much like you could on the back. It's the same exact tab. So you can store his his blasters as well as the buzzsaw uh, while he's in car mode. So it kind of gives him a weapon to use while he's rolling and it is kind of pretty cool. And to start with a few comparisons, here is G1 Hot Rod, Classics Rodimus, Titan's Return Hot Rod, Power of the Primes Hot Rod, my customized Earthrise Optimus Prime, and a collection of 1986 Autobots along with Bumblebee to roll alongside Hot Rod. Overall, I think this figure is a really awesome figure to add to your collection, especially if you are a fan of the character. And I think that despite his slight flaws with his shoulders and the yellow joints, I still think he is well worth adding to your collection. Um, I think that this is probably the best version of a an affordable non-masterpiece hot rod that we could get uh, as of right now. And I definitely recommend him completely. But I want to know what you guys think. What do you think of Studio Series 86 Hot Rod? Of course, leave your thoughts in the comments section below. Be sure to thumbs up this video and subscribe. I have many more Transformers discussions, retrospectives, reviews, and news coming down the pipeline. So stay tuned for that. And as always, guys, until next time, till all are one.